In this video, we'll further discuss Active Directory groups and then move on to Organizational Units and Delegation of Control. Now let's move back to group memberships again so that I can show you how to force a user to be a part of a specific group in every computer and especially if it's a local group. For example, I'll add a user to a domain local group and it could be a member of that domain local group no matter where they are in the domain, no matter which computer they log on to. For him to admin an organizational unit and you don't want to put too much access permissions to these users. It is too much of a hassle to go through every computer in the domain and make a user and admin on each one of them. So you're gonna need to make a group policy to make this happen. Now let me show you how to make a group policy. First you need to open group policy management. It's under tools in the server manager. Right click on the organizational unit that you want to set up on a group policy. This is to limit the level of access this admin would have. Then click on the create a GPO in this domain and link it there. Enter the name and press OK. Then right click on the GPO, click on edit. Then under the computer configuration, then policies, windows settings, security settings, then right click on the restricted groups, then add group then type administrators click OK and click on add browse for the user that you want to add then click OK but don't stop there yet click browse again add domain admins and the other accounts that should have access to this specific organizational unit adding the domain admins is very important because this will make sure that they still have access to the computers after adding the new account otherwise the only one that could access this organizational unit is the user we just added earlier then restart the computer to see the changes made now here's another way to adjust the group membership open group policy manager again here I've prepared a policy called Hoyt user administrator which is a name I just came up with so let's open and edit Hoyt users administrator you can either go through computer configuration or user configuration to do so, depending on what the contents of the organizational unit are. And because this one is linked to a user container, I'm just gonna go through user configuration. So my goal here is to control the membership of this group or any other group. Retaining the administrators group, I would create a new local group for the computers where this would apply. Although, you may also just update an existing group if you already have one or you could just also delete it and replace it with a new one. So now we could either select a group name or type in a new one. Again, do not click on browse because it will look up administrators in the domain which is not what we want here because we just want to adjust the membership for the local administrators group, not the whole domain. We don't also want to use the built-in group templates under the down arrow right here. You should also note that here the add the current user doesn't mean the current user logged on to the computer but the users we specified right here below. So here I'm just gonna use user Hoyt user01. So we're gonna add this to the group then click on apply or OK. Then all that's left is to try if the user has access to the computers. And since the group policy that we've made applies to the organizational unit that this user is in, it should also apply to this user. Now let's move on to organizational units. The main point of organizational units is to simplify administration of objects. So there's no point in making one if there's no user, computers, or groups inside an organizational unit. You should remember that organizational units cannot act as permissions, meaning you cannot just right click on a folder and share it to the organizational unit. But they are very powerful when it comes to group policy objects or GPOs. So either you could easily create a group policy for hundreds of accounts or misconfigure a group policy and do a lot of damage to the domain in just a few clicks. Although they can be divided into divisions, departments, or job roles. 
Note that default containers like users and computers are not organizational units. Also, if you've used scripts or batch files to create a user account, it would automatically put those accounts into the user's container. And you cannot put a group policy object to that container because it's not an organizational unit. Redirect user and redirect computer. If you create a batch file or scripts to create your user accounts, and you don't specify a path for users and computers, it will automatically dump the users into the user's container and the computers to the computer's container. So what redirection of users and computers offers is a lot more control. For example, if I create an organizational unit named blocked users, which strips the privileges of every account inside the organizational unit so that we won't accidentally give a certain account a lot of privileges. And if it's already time for this to be unblocked to start working, you can just drag the user to the organizational unit that you want to put it into. Now to do this, you should run cmd as an administrator, then enter reader user, then the path. This is so that the new users would be redirected to the new specified path instead of the default containers. And then the distinguished name for the destination organizational unit. Now to see if it works, let's try creating a new user without specifying a path, then type in net user, the username, asterisk, then forward slash add, then enter the password, and then hit refresh. And there it is. Now let's move on to creating and deleting organizational units. Protect container from accidental deletion. This feature is a new level of protection for the organizational units, which is not present in the older versions of Windows Server. This is to protect your directory from unwanted data loss. Now to get rid of the organizational unit protected by this option, you need to go to View, then click on Advanced Features, then right click on the organizational unit that you want to delete, choose Properties, go to the Object tab, Deselect the protect object from accidental deletion. Then now you can delete the organizational unit, though it still does give you a warning if there are still other things inside the organizational unit before deleting. Now let's move on to delegation. This allows certain users or groups to have certain level of administration privileges to an organizational unit which is very useful if you want this user to admin an organizational unit but not give him the privileges of a domain administrator. Now to set these permissions, right click on the organizational unit that you want to edit, choose delegate control, then select the users or groups you want to have higher level of access to this organizational unit, which is normally done in groups, and then click on next, then choose the tasks that you want to give the, to this user. I'll just go with this for now. You can experiment on the other tasks if you want. Then click on next, then finish. And it's probably best to restart your computer even if it doesn't say that you have to. And you can also create a custom task to delegate, which is useful so that you can delegate access to specific child objects. And now we're done with organizational units and delegation. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned much in this video. For more videos, check out this link right here.